Now, I don't know about you guys, but networking is one of my favorite topics when it comes to computing. And I'm not even sure why. It's just fun to me. I just love making things talk to other things, connecting hardware together, setting up rules and routes and all the other aspects that are associated with networking. It's a ton of fun. And in Proxmox, networking is definitely an important thing. And what I'm going to do in this video is show you guys a little bit about networking in Proxmox. Specifically, what we're going to be doing is separating the VM network and the management network, which is absolutely an important thing to do. So let's get started. Now, at this point in the series, we're getting into territory where not all of you guys will be able to follow along. The reason for that is because not everyone is going to have the hardware that's required for the topics that are coming up in the series. So if you don't have the required hardware in order to follow along, that's okay. You can simply take notes and watch. That's absolutely reasonable. And like I mentioned in the intro, we're going over networking in this video. So it's very helpful if you guys have a network already that you can use. The goal essentially is to separate the management network from the VM network. That's a very good practice. But again, the ability to do that depends on whether or not you have another network to use. We're getting into the territory of VLANs and subnetting at this point, and teaching you guys how to create VLANs and subnets is beyond the scope of this video. I already have other VLANs and subnets set up. I've already been using VLANs and subnets in my network. And another thing that complicates this is that even if I did show you guys how to set those things up, each of you will have a different router or firewall in your network, so it's impossible for me to go over the process in the probably thousands of devices that are out there so it's probably easier to just follow along. Now, what we're going to do is focus on the individual host right here. I'm going to add an additional network. If you do add additional Proxmox nodes to your cluster and essentially create a cluster, then any networks that you create on your first host, you'll also want to create those on the secondary host as well. But we haven't actually set up a cluster yet, so we're not going to worry about that right now. So to set up an additional network, you first click on the host where you want to set up that network onto. I'm on this one right here, and then you click on Network. In my case, I have VMBR0. That's VMBridge0. And right here, we can see what port is assigned to that particular bridge. And this particular card has an IP address of 172.16.249.4. It's a slash 24 subnet. And that's essentially the same thing as a Class C network, but in the industry, we don't really use classful networking anymore. Anyway, that's the IP address and the subnet, and here's the gateway. All of this right here was set up when we first installed Proxmox, so we didn't have to configure any of this. If you recall, when we went through the installation process, it asked us for all of this information here. So you should have this part right here all set. In my case, this particular port right here is on the same network card as this port right here. So these two are actually the same network card. This is a 10 gig ethernet card, which is probably overkill, but it's great, I love it. And these are the two individual ethernet ports that are on that card. So right here we have this port, ENP5S0F0, and of course the name will most likely be different for you, but well, we can see that that port is assigned to this bridge. But I have this port here, and what I want to do is assign that to a different network. Now I can use any of these devices if I wanted to. It doesn't really matter which one. But I'm going to choose this one right here because it's another 10 gig port, and I'm going to prefer to use 10 gig whenever I can, so it makes sense to use that one. So what I want to do is create another network here and have my VMs use that network and then dedicate this network right here for the management layer. And when I say management layer, I'm talking about this entire web console. Generally speaking, you don't want the web console on the same network as the virtual machines. You want to have some separation there. And that helps make sure that if someone breaks into one network, that they hopefully won't be able to access the other network. Whether or not they can access other networks, of course, depends on how good your firewall rules are. But I'm not going to get into that. I'll just assume that your firewall rules are on point. 
So even though I have this interface right here, I'm not actually going to adjust the settings right here on the interface itself. I mean, I could click edit and add the network that way, but what I wanna do instead is create a bridge. That's standard practice. So I'll click right here where it shows create, and I wanna create a Linux bridge, so I'll click that. And it automatically gave it the name of VMBR1. I could customize that, but I won't. I think that's good enough. And then next what I'm going to do is type in the network subnet that I want to use for this particular interface. In my case, it's going to be 10.10.10.0 slash 24. As far as what you should type on your end, that all depends on your network. Hopefully you've already created this subnet and VLAN on your end. And whatever your network classification is for your VM network that you hopefully have already created, you type that in right here. But if you haven't done that, don't worry about it. You can just watch this video and take notes. You don't actually need multiple networks. Yes, it's a good practice, but it's not required. Now, what we need to do right here is type the port of the Ethernet adapter that we want to use for this bridge. Now I'm going to move this over here because it's in the way. I want to add this right here. So what I'm going to do is type it in right there. So it's EMP and then 5 and S0F1. Right here, I'll add a comment of VMNet. I'll click Create. And that should be all we need to do. Now notice that there's no actual gateway here. We already have a gateway right here. So with Proxmox, you only want one gateway. And that might seem weird for some of you, but it really doesn't matter. Just keep in mind that you traditionally leave the gateway field blank, unless you do run into a situation where you actually need a gateway. But we already have one, so we don't really need to add another one. If I scroll over, you can see the comment here to the right. It's kind of hard to see because of the font size of my browser here. But this is where the comment would be right here. We're going to ignore that though. Now at this point, we have some pending changes as it shows here. We could apply the configuration now, or we could just reboot the server, and it's going to go ahead and apply it at that time. I'm going to apply it right now. I'll click Apply Configuration. I'll say Yes. And now we have two bridges here. And this one right here is active and ready to go. So when you are going to create a virtual machine, what you're going to do from now on, I'm not actually going to go through with the creation, but I'll show you the section that pertains to networking. Just going to keep clicking through here until we get to network. So by default, it's using VMBR0. And what I'm going to do is drop that down to VMBR1. So going forward, every time I create a VM, I want it to be on the virtual machine network, not on the management network. I'm going to cancel this. I don't actually need to create a VM to show that point. But I do have virtual machines already that do exist. So what I need to do is go over here to the VM and then to hardware. And right here we have network device. Let's go ahead and edit that. And we can just change the bridge right here. Click OK. I'll do the same thing for this one right here. Let's edit that. Change it to VMBR1. Click OK. And let's start up this VM. And this VM has already started, so what I'm going to do is log in. And let's see if it got a new IP address. And right here, we have an IP address. We have an IP address of 10.10.10.206. I know the font is really small, so what I'll do is I'll just go down here. And there we go. I'm logged into Web Server 2. And if I check out the IP addresses here, here's the IP address. It's on the proper network. So. I was able to separate the management network from the VM network. From this point on, when I create virtual machines, I'll make sure that I create them in the proper network, not the same network that I use for management, and that's actually a best practice. Since we've taken a look at networking in today's class, 
that actually opens the door for other exciting features of Proxmox. For example, shared storage, clustering, and there's actually more. In the next video, we're actually going to set up shared storage, which is going to be especially fun. So join me in that episode as soon as I have it uploaded, if I don't already have it uploaded, and I'll see you there. Thanks for watching.